So, Joe, you are preparing the sermon this week for this Sunday, and yes. we thought it would be helpful, we hope, to people to hear um, a little bit about the preparation and have some things to think about as, as you prepare the sermon as well. Today's uh, gospel text that you're working on uh, contains a very familiar line. Mm. And sometimes the familiarity can be a challenge when you're preaching. But can you tell us something about uh, where you think this sermon will go? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so yeah, that line that we just heard that, you know, maybe a lot of us have memorized as, uh, you know, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Uh, and, and render unto God the things that are God's. Um, we know this one, right? <laughs> and uh, oftentimes I think, it, well, people think about it, well, is Jesus kind of giving us um, a theory of the relationship between the church and the state? Uh, and people maybe have tried to kind of articulate what, what that might be and what is Jesus saying about that? And I think the, for me, the, the place to really start is not with the, with, the, with the statement itself, but the statement in the context of Matthew's Gospel. Uh, and um, when, we, when we look at the context of Matthew's Gospel, we see that Jesus' response isn't to a kind of a dispassionate um, uh, discussion about the relationship between church and state. It's actually um, in the context of a controversy or a, um, or a challenge um, because the, the um, passage begins, then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So um, Jesus gives this statement in response to an effort on the part of um, his religious opponents to entrap him. Uh, and and they, they weren't just trying to, um, uh, you know, catch him out with a misstatement. They wanted to get him in trouble, um, right? We know he's heading towards Jerusalem, his death uh, and resurrection. Um, but the, the intention is, to, is to, to entrap him, to get him to say something that is going to um, uh, end up uh, getting him into trouble with some authorities. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, again, is not a... Um, in the context of Matthew's Gospel, it's not just sort of, well, let's, let's, let's think about these great, <laughs> great ideas. It is Jesus responding some, to, to people who are out to get him. So this isn't a situation where people are just curious to hear Jesus' views on this subject. Mm -hmm. They're actually having this conversation or asking him a question to try to get him in serious trouble. Mm -hmm. Can you say something about how this actually, why is this a trap? Does anybody really love to pay taxes? <laughs> right. Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> not now and uh, probably not then. Um, and, uh, but I, I think it's probably a, d for different reasons then than now, right? Now, um, one gets a sense that, you know, well, I don't want to, in North America at least, I don't want to pay taxes or more than I have to, but there's also this sense in which, well, um, the taxes that we pay, at least some of it goes towards, you know, you know, roads and education and health and some other things that, that benefit the common good. Um, and I have some kind of representation through my elected officials in that. So, so let's, let's just put that aside. Um, it, it, we're in, in the tax that we're talking about in Jesus' day was the tax from, uh, to be paid to, to Rome. And at that time, Rome was an occupying force, right? And so, um, you know, who wants to pay taxes to an occupying force? And I don't know if anybody sort of thinks that you get some kind of benefit from that. Um, maybe there were some benefits to, to having Rome as an occupying force, but you got to think it's, it's a very unpopular thing uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, first of all, they're occupying your land that you think God has given you. Uh, why are we paying them taxes? Uh, it's 
Uh, so, uh, not a good thing. So, um, so certain kind of ardent Jewish nationalists did not want to pay taxes at all because they they sought the um, the throwing out of of the Roman occupying forces. It's interesting to note that you know this the story says the Pharisees um, brought with them the Herodians. Now it's interesting little detail because the Herodians are up in Galilee. This story is taking place in Judea, but the Herodians are uh, folks who were supported Herod, Herod Antipas, who was the uh, ruler of um, the region up in up in Galilee, and they're essentially kind of. Roman puppets. <laughs> so uh, they would represent sort of a different Jewish take, which would be, yeah, you support, you would pay the tax because they're essentially going to um, support the Roman policy because their, their power is supported by the Romans. So, so no matter how Jesus answers the question about taxes, he's going to, he's going to get himself in trouble, um, right? So if he says, um, yeah, pay the tax. Uh, there's going to be a, there's going to be a lot of not just the you not just the Jewish nationalists, uh, the kind of ardent nationalists uh, who kind of say no way uh, we shouldn't. But no one likes it, right? And who who's going to like paying this this tax? So he's going to, if he if he says pay it, he's going to make these people really mad. Um, now if he says don't pay it. He may make the Herodians mad, um, but I think his bigger problem is with the Romans, right? <laughs> um, because uh, we know, you know, Romans kind of let people kind of do things in their um, in their region and sort of locally govern as as long as they got what they want. Uh, and one of the things they really wanted was was their money, and uh, that would be a. Uh, uh, a position that would call forth um, a a harsh response from Rome. <laughs> I think they let a lot of things go, but when it came down to getting their money, they wanted their money. And so, if Jesus said, "Don't pay this tax," he is treading on very thin ice uh, with the Romans. Not just the Herodians, um, but the force of Rome coming to the stop this kind of seditious uh, kind of statement. So how do you answer this question? So that's what I mean by a trap. There's no right answer. There's no answer that's going to make him new friends. No. Without making a whole bunch of enemies. Right. You're, you're going to, one way you're going to make these folks mad and one way you're going to make these folks mad. Uh, and um, that was the whole point. It was a trap. Uh, it wasn't, an, like I said, it wasn't an honest question about the relationship between church and state, it was, how can we get rid of this guy? Uh, he said, you know, uh, we get him, we get the Romans mad at him, maybe the Romans will take care of him, or we get the ardent zealots uh, mad at him, and maybe they'll take care of him. And either way, we want somebody to take care of this guy and, and, and get rid of him. So how does Jesus respond? Does he avoid the trap? Uh, yes, I think he does <laughs> avoid the trap, uh, and he knows it's the trap, right? It, it says Jesus, aware of their malice, uh, says, "Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites?" <laughs> <laughs> so he knows what's going on, um, and so uh, he does um, a really clever thing. Uh, he, he he doesn't answer the question first right away. He says, "Well, show me the coin," uh, and. Um, the, and they brought, you know, show me the coin used for the tax, and they brought him a denarius. So the idea is that um, you had to pay this Roman tax uh, in Roman currency. Um, and uh, so he holds it up and he says, um, whose head is this and whose title? And so at the time of Jesus, uh, the denarius uh, would have been imprinted with the image of Caesar at the time, Tiberius. Uh, and it would have had an inscription too that said something like, uh, Tiberius Caesar Augustus, son of the divine Augustus, I priest. Ooh, ego much? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, so um, here you have it. Um, okay, we already kind of said, well, who, who wants to pay this tax, right, to the Roman occupying forces? Um, it, um, 
No one. <laughs> no one, no one, right? No one, right? And then Jesus makes it a theological issue, right? Because um, here's the image of the emperor attributing divine qualities to him, uh, and um, there are a couple of commandments. There are a couple of commandments about that, right? So faithful Jews would immediately kind of think about, wait a second, uh, we first commandment: I am the Lord your God. Um, you have no other gods before me. Uh, and the second commandment, no graven images, right? So here's something that seems to be breaking the first <laughs> two commandments, right? So um, they ask him this question about taxes to trap him, and Jesus gets the coin and says, you know what, folks? It's not just about taxes, it's about theology. It's about who is God and, and what we owe to God. Uh, and so... So after kind of holding this up, I think then people are probably squirming a little bit. <laughs> it's probably the guy who had the, this commandment breaking coin in his pocket. Exactly, like, oh, interesting, yeah. <laughs> Where'd you get that? Uh, yeah, so um, haul that out, take note. Charlie over there had that. <laughs> uh, and then, so, but, so Jesus takes it to the theological level, not just the tax level, the theological level, and here's this image of Caesar uh, attributing divine status to him. And then Jesus says, you know, give to the emperor the things that are emperors uh, and give to God the things that are God's. And so I think the Jesus' statement here is trying to kind of help us see um, a uh, two cases. One is you got Caesar claiming to be God, mm -hmm. and you have his image stamped on uh, a coin. Okay, that's his image, give it to him. But then, we, what are we to give to God, right? And then the question is, well, what has the image of God imprinted on it? And again, this is a conversation among faithful Jews, and, and I think, Oh, uh, right, creation story, right? Um, human beings are created in the image and likeness of God. Oh, what does that mean that we owe God? Right? Give to God the things that are kind of imprinted with the image of God. And that is us. Uh, and so, um, this this story it's a, that's Jesus's response. Notice right, he doesn't ask, ask the tax question. He makes a theological question, and he says, "Okay, folks, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Give to God the things are God." And it says, you know, they heard this, they were amazed, uh, they left him, and they went away. <laughs> so yes, he 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 avoids the trap by taking this question about taxes and, and reframing it as a question about theology. Um, what belongs to the emperor? Then give that back to him. But really think, what is it that belongs to God? And um, what is stamped in the image of God? Uh, and what ought we to give back? Uh, to God. So what a profound answer Jesus gives. He goes from taking it from the level of, yeah, this coin bears the image of Caesar, so yeah, give it, give it to Caesar. Hand it back to Rome. Rome made it. Rome can have it. That's fine. To this much more profound level of give to God everything that belongs to God. What what bears the image of God? And anybody hearing that phrase, familiar with the creation story, knows that it's every human being actually is made in the image and likeness of God. We bear one, we bear God's image to the world and to one another. So the coin, sure, do what you need to with that. But also give to God everything bearing God's image. So so what is that? And how do we do that? Yeah. Well, I, I suppose it's everything, right? <laughs> All things.
thanks come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, everything that I am, everything that I have comes from God. Uh, and um, so my whole life should be an offering uh, to God, to the glory of God. Um, and I guess that means that um, getting that in place, mm -hmm. right, helps me sort out how I can do that in all these other relationships that I may or may not have. Um, you know, Augustine once said, you know, love God and then do what you will. But I think the idea was, is if, if we are rightly ordered towards God, all these other areas of our life will be rightly ordered. If they're not, you know, if, if, if those other things have priority in the place of where God should be, then everything's going to be out of whack, right? If I make my job, my family, um, my recreation, my hobbies into God and put that in the place of God, then they're all always going to be messed up. But if I understand that I'm stamped with the image of God, then all that I am and all that I have belong to God, then these other things find their rightful place in my lives. That I love my family um, uh, in the way in which uh, someone who is completely dependent on God loves their family. I, I serve my community in the way in which someone who is completely dependent on God serves their community. I enjoy these things, these good gifts of God, uh, these good relationships and friendships and, uh, in the way in which someone who bears the image of God and is completely dependent on God. It seems to be that kind of prioritizing of things, perhaps. That's really helpful, and your words also bring home why I think it's so wonderful uh, that Jesus is saying these things in response to something about a coin. Mm -hmm. um, we have, in English, we have these expressions about uh, spending our lives, right? Um, so a coin uh, can be given back to Rome. That's whatever. Rome made it. Rome can have it. Um, but our, our lives, too, are to be spent. We're like mm -hmm coins to be in circulation. It's not for God. Um, God gives, God takes away. It's not about giving a coin back. It's really about using who we are as we bear the image of God to be together with other people and mm -hmm. to, to spend our lives, um, pouring our lives out in all of those relationships and in service as a way of glorifying God, which is really quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. And there's something about the more you spend, the more you have. I don't know. Yeah. So, do Jesus' words, Jesus' give to God what belongs to God, um, does that have anything to do with taxes? Uh, well, that's a, you know, that's a good question. I, and I don't, I don't have a good answer on this, really. I don't know. I could tell you some things that I think I've heard other people say. I mean, some people read this and say, well, um, give back to God what belongs to God. That's everything. So that means if everything goes to God, nothing goes to Caesar, <laughs> right? Um, so uh, you could read it that way, right? I mean you know, give his coin back to him, but really everything belongs to God. Um, so they're, they're calling for a more of a, a real kind of distancing from our obligations towards, but certainly towards the Romans, that was one thing, but then when you start, then are we bringing it back to our relationship to, to the particular state or government in which we live? Do we have any obligations there? And you know, there are some Christians who don't want to pay taxes for theological reasons, um, and uh, the Amish, uh, especially because especially because they're pacifist and they don't want to in any way support military um, uh, in any form because it goes against their religious convictions. So um, others don't take that uh, approach. They they feel like, well, no, we have to pray for our leaders, and 
um, and contributing to the, through our through taxes is a way of um, supporting the common good. And uh, and I I, I I think that's a, a faithful way to do it as well. I, I suspect that kind of remembering this, it, of course, everything we owe to God, but also remembering that everybody is is created in the image of God, right? So that in a certain sense, our, it, maybe extending our reflection on this passage, maybe going, in, going into a direction that maybe the passage doesn't entirely cover here. But if every human being is created in the image of God, that I have certain kinds of responsibilities towards them. Mm -hmm. uh, that, they have a, that they have a dignity and a value that comes from their relationship to God. Mm -hmm. And that calls forth uh, a responsibility on the part of all people to treat them as such. Mm -hmm. And depending on the society in which you live in, um, the way in which we show care towards others and the way we show our responsibility may th be through some collective means that uh, we give towards, and that may actually be <laughs> a tax uh, that we contribute towards and say, everybody has a right to some, some basic goods um, because of the fact that they are created in the image and likeness of God. Not because of anything else, but because of that, they have a right to a decent house and, you know, some health care uh, and safety. And how can we contribute towards that? And in that way, maybe our taxes can help. Uh, so, <laughs> I, you know, it depends on where you are, right? We're not living under Roman occupation. <laughs> Uh, what society are you living under, and how our contribution towards the welfare of all people um, may actually be something that relatively just societies try to meet through a system of taxation that hopefully is fair, may be something that we should do. Um, I don't know if you you have th more thoughts on that? I think it's good to um, be married to an ethicist who thinks through these things in such detail. I think what uh, immediately strikes me is that even Caesar is made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. And that means Caesar has some obligations to um, to bear that image and to give to God all that, whether it's Tiberius or anyone else mm -hmm. who, who stands in that place now, um, they also have obligations to acknowledge that uh, God is the source of all that they have and all that they are, and to live their lives in such a way that others are served and that the dignity and well-being of all people is their goal. Not all leaders do, of course, but I think that's another takeaway mm -hmm. in what Jesus is saying here. Mm -hmm. This conversation began by noting that you are preparing the sermon for Sunday, and thank you so much for sharing some of the fruits of your preparation with, with all of us in this conversation. Um, knowing it's, it's not done yet, um, I have one last question for you, and that is, Joe, what will your sermon be about? Mm. That is a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I suppose uh, we'll see what the Holy Spirit has in store for us. Um, but I, I guess I can tell you what it's not going to be about, for sure. Okay. Uh, it's not going to be about taxes. Uh, <laughs> And um, because 
the question that is raised for Jesus is about taxes, and he doesn't answer it directly. He, he takes it to the theological level. So, you know, despite the fact that we had an interesting conversation about, you know, maybe the implications for, uh, as Christians created in the image, understanding that we're created in the image and likeness of God, what that means uh, in society, that seems to be more for an adult education or maybe out in the parking lot or the conversation somewhere else. This, the, what's, what are the implications? That's interesting. Um, but when we gather together as the church, um, and part of our gathering is the proclamation of the good news, um, it seems to me we are, we are here not to talk about tax policy. We are here to point, um, point to God and offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving um, to the God on whom we're dependent for all things. And that seems to be where Jesus ends, right? <laughs> uh, you're created in the image and likeness of God. Give back to God everything that belongs to God. Wow, everything, right? And so the church has to be the place that proclaims that, right? Uh, all things to the greater glory of God. And so um, I think I will try to go where, I will try to bear witness to where Jesus goes in this story, which is to point us to, to God who is our creator, to God who is our preserver, to God who is our redeemer, to God who is our hope. Uh, and in the context of Christian worship, um, it seems to me the proclamation is, is the good news of of what that God has done for us and, and the hope we have in that God uh, and what that calls us to be and to do as faithful witnesses uh, to, this, to this hope that we have. And, it, and that seems to be where a sermon goes and it, it seems to me where Jesus actually kind of took us. So, um, I think people come to church to hear good news, and I think uh, the church the church has good news. It has the good news of the God who is revealed in Jesus Christ, who um, we we worship and praise and serve in so many ways. I, I don't think the good news is a is a is a um, tax policy <laughs> or a particular relationship between church and state. Uh, it is. It is the good news of, of, of the God on whom we are utterly dependent. And how wonderful that this God um, invites us uh, into um, his life, uh, a life that, that we can participate in, a, a, a history of redemption that we can participate in by offering back to God everything. Uh, that God has given us for his glory and um, for his purposes and for his kingdom. So I think the sermon goes in that direction. Um, I look forward to hearing that. Thank you.